but the remnant remained. The remnant carried on. I'm going to teach you tonight on the spirit of Jezebel. And I know that you have heard many messages on that. But I'm going to come from two directions, which you may have not heard. And the first one is from experience. And the second one is that what we have received from God. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 12 Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 12. The Bible says there uh, in verse number 12. For our wrestle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against, say principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts, of wickedness in heavenly places, four dimensions of spiritual warfare. And so we must understand that there are warfare that's going to take place tonight. And if the intercessors are in the house, I want you to start praying for the service. As we approach the end of this age, we are experiencing more and more battles than ever before. How many of you have had some battles this year? Let me just see. We are all experiencing battles. Some experiences that we go through and difficulties that we went through is because of our own fault, because of disobedience, because of things that we've done wrong. And the other problems we face is because of demonic activities. And we have to understand how these things work. The spiritual dimension was created to govern the natural world, this earthly realm. And there are three spiritual warfares that you must understand That is happening. The first warfare is the mind. There's a battlefield of the mind. There's a warfare in the mind. Then you have the second one is demonology. Demonology is simply when we cast out demons from people. So when we, when we cast out a demon from a person, we call that demonology. It's a demon coming out of oppression, pain, hurt, suicide, whatever. And so we deal with them. And the third realm is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is when you go into a second or go into the second heavens and you do spiritual warfare over territories. So you must understand warfare, warfare of the mind. You must understand demonology, small demons, and then you must understand warfare. Spiritual warfare is territorial. There's a fight over your city. There's demons of your city. There's demons of your business. There's demons over your area. And you need to understand that takes spiritual warfare. That doesn't take a mind thing or a mind battle. Or it doesn't mean that you just cast out a demon. You have to go into spiritual warfare. And the devil knows it's the end times. Therefore, he released principalities, not demons. He released principalities against people. He released the strongest spirits he has to destroy men and women of God. And I'm speaking to every man and woman of God in this building. My sons, my daughters, my Ephesians, my deacons, everybody must listen. The devil has launched out and sent forth principalities, which is the strongest demonic forces, to destroy men and women of God and to silence the voices of apostles and prophets. And this spirit that we are talking about that has been released is the spirit of Jezebel. It is a principality. You don't cast out Jezebel from a person. It's a principality you need to hit. That spirit works in our society. It brings abortion. We see how it brings abortion. So Jezebel is not a woman. Let me just say that from the beginning. It operates in men, operates in women, operates in government. It operates in nations, operates in cities and in businesses. And if you don't understand this principality, you 
are going to be destroyed in this warfare. If you are a casual Christian, you're going to have casualties. You're going to become a casualty. And so this spirit brings forth abortion. It brings forth um, lesbianism and homosexuality. It brings forth witchcraft. It silences the voices of apostles. It breaks families. It breaks down governments. It destroys churches. And here's the most important thing I want you to hear tonight. And if you forget everything, don't forget what I'm now about to say. You must discern between the person and the principality. Because a lot of people operate with Jezebel. Therefore, you cannot treat them bad. You must love them. You must discern between the person and the principality. Because if you're not, you're going to destroy that person. You cannot win the spirit or this battle with Jezebel unless you have a rhema word from God. A rhema word which I'm giving you is the only thing that's going to destroy this principality called Jezebel. And every time the devil wants to stop men of God... Woman of God, he will send two spirits. The first one is the Antichrist spirit. And the second one is called Jezebel. Please write the following down. You must be merciful with the person, but merciless against the spirit. Say that again. You must be merciful with the person, but merciless against the spirit. Six out of ten people have the spirit of Jezebel operating in them. And here is the reason why. Because they think their behavior is normal. And they don't even know that this spirit is controlling them. Every time the devil wants to come and destroy a family, a church, a business, a nation, he will send forth two spirits. The Antichrist spirit. And the Jezebel spirit. When we go to a country, we face these challenges and we face the full government of the enemy. Tomorrow I want the whole church to start praying and this movement to start praying for me and the team because we're leaving for London on, on this weekend. We'll be in London this week, this coming weekend. You know, faith on fire that we had. We're having Faith on Fire UK this coming week. We will be live on television. Now, do do you think it's just going to be awesome? There's going to be warfare. There's going to be religious spirits. There's going to be stuff. And I need the church to pray because every time we go to a nation, we face the full government of the enemy. We don't just rock up there. You have to be prayed in. When I go and preach at churches, I don't just come there with 10 minutes of prayer. I understand that when I go to that city, there is a territorial spirit over that city that an apostle needs to break. And therefore, when we hit that city, it becomes a full-on warfare. When you want me to come to your church, and I'm just saying this humbly, you must be prepared. Not for me. For the backlashes that comes, for the territorial spirits that come, because when we come in, it comes in full governmental authority. When I come to this church on a Sunday, I don't come as the pastor, I come as an apostle to take over territorial spirits operating in this area. I pastor my city. I don't pastor a hundred of people, a couple of hundreds of people. And so, as an apostle, we have to take authority over these things and understand how it works. But let us expose this demon tonight. How many of you want to expose this thing tonight? Because maybe you'll be operating under it or you may be influenced by it. And so, let's define the spirit. Let's define the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel was the most wicked woman in the Bible. She has no habitant. habitant. In other words, she's got no place where she comes from. 
She's just not connected to any person. It's very hard to live with Jezebel. Because she will always try to control you. She has no friends. She's isolated. The moment you say no to Jezebel is the moment she will remove you. No, we're not doing that. She'll stand up and say, you get out of the way or she will come full force for you. If I use the word she, it's not the woman, the spirit I'm talking about. Most of marriages end up in divorce. Most ministries are split. And there's no legacy because of this spirit operating. In 1 Kings chapter 16, verse number 31, let's just read this. 1 Kings chapter 16, verse number 31. Just say amen, somebody. Amen. And it came to pass as though it had been a tr tr excuse me, trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of of Nabat, that he took as wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ephiabel, king of the Sidonites. And he went and served Baal and worshipped him. So he took this wife Jezebel and she started turning this man against God. The, the God called Baal means this, the God of storms. How many of you had some storms this year? <laughs> Sexual perversion means families destroyed. And here God comes and he sends the prophet Elijah and he says, I want you to confront Jezebel and I want you to confront Baal and I want you to confront this whole system. In Malachi chapter 4, verse number 5 and 6, the last two verses of the New Testament. If you want to turn there, it reads, it's a very powerful portion of Scripture. And that's why I believe it's an end time move message that I'm preaching. He says here, Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Why Elijah? Hmm? He must confront who? Hmm. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. I'm going to show you Jezebel. I'm going to expose that thing tonight. Jezebel hates fatherhood. It hates sonship. Cannot stand it. And God is going to raise up men and women of God, prophets tonight. That's going to confront Jezebel. And we're going to take territorials back. We're going to take dominion back. We're going to take our money back. We're going to take our children back. Come on, we're going to take some victory tonight in the name of Jesus. Ahab here was married to Jezebel. But unfortunately, Ahab was a weak man. He couldn't say no to Jezebel. And because he couldn't say no to her, the whole nation lost the battles. They lost the victory. They lost the spoils. They lost everything because he couldn't say no. And that spirit destroyed Israel. It destroyed the hearts of fathers. That Elijah had to come to restore them again. That spirit destroyed husbands, destroyed wives, destroyed governments, marriages, families. But I believe God is raising end time generals. That's going to stand up in the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why we're gathering together on the 14th of August to say the following, that the remnant is coming together and we're going to put a fire around Jezebel in our nation and we're going to believe God for a supernatural move of His Spirit in our nation like never before. How many of you believe that with me here tonight? Shut up, part of the remnants. Shut up, I'm a general in the army. So Jezebel becomes full grown when the spirit becomes the person. 
How is this person or how is the spirit now full grown? Is when the spirit or when the person knows that, that, that you operate in that spirit. When you fully know I operate in that thing, then that spirit is to its maximum strength. Now what is the entry points of Jezebel? Firstly, abuse. If you have been abused in your life, that could be an entry point for Jezebel. Pain, like I said, pain attracts demonic influences. Generational curses, dysfunctional families, stuff that happened in the womb. All these things are entry points for Jezebel to enter in. Because Jezebel is rooted in pain. Now why is the spirit released to destroy the generals of this end time move? And what is the assignments of Jezebel? Now I want you to write down and follow with me. Firstly, this is how the spirit, the assignments of Jezebel is to undermine and destroy Set authority. It undermines set authority. Here's the thing what you must understand about this spirit. This spirit craves for authority. It wants authority. Cannot move without that authority. You'll see how this thing moves the whole time. The second thing that this spirit wants to do is to to destroy manhood and priesthood. It's coming for the manhood. It's to destroy the priesthood and the manhood. That's why you will see the, the movements of the LGB so strong. Getting stronger because it's a Jezebel spirit running behind that thing. You'll see the spirit operate in families. See the spirit operate in churches, in businesses. It runs wild. And this is what the spirit does. It reduces the man to nothing. In a home, they never the head in that home. That spirit will make sure you're not the head. There will be pressure at home to keep you from developing to become a mature man. To become a mature priest of the house. And that is why nine out of ten marriages fail because of the spirit. It destroys people. Revelation chapter 2. Verse number 20 and verse number 21. Revelation chapter 2. Verse number 20 and 21. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of a sexual immorality and she did not repent. Now you must understand, God will give her grace to repent. Here's another characteristic, an assignment of the spirit. It hates fatherhood. I don't know. You know this dad thing. (laughs) This dad thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's not a, it's just a thing. Come on. Am I here? This dad thing. This dad thing irritates Jezebel. I'm not going to call you dad. Religious people struggle with this thing. I'm coming. She stops the supernatural. Not the assignment. She stops the supernatural. Why aren't you coming to the movement of the supernatural? Now nah, we can have it every Sunday, you know. Ah. 
I'm hearing a different spirit there. They stop the movement of God. Any movement, they'll stop. And that's why, and I need to be very careful what I say now, but I, I'm sure you'll know what, what I'm talking about. But there were many movements that started in this nation. That was very powerful. Started by great men of God, generals, many years ago. And that movement stopped and became a monument and became a denomination. Because there are too many Jezebels on the church board that shut down the fathers and the movement and the supernatural in which they were born. Now they just motivational speakers. Listen, man, I, I want to say this. If, if you want motivational speaking, go and pay somebody in the secular world. But this is the house of God. This is where we will see the signs and the wonders of God. This is where the blind will see and the cripples will walk and the deaf will hear and people will have a revival. I want to have a 20-minute motivational speaking. I can go and pay a business deal for that. But I'm here to tell you, I want a move of the Holy Ghost. I want to have a revival in my nation. I want to have a revival on the continents of this world. Now is the time to arise remnant, to move in the supernatural power of the living God. Shout amen. Put your hands together if you believe it here tonight. Hallelujah. Another assignment is to kill and destroy apostles and prophets. What's up with this apostle thing? Number seven is establish her own dominion. Establish her own authority. That spirit wants to have its own control. Its own authority. Now remember I'm speaking from my own experience. I've been in ministry for 20 years. See how this thing operates. In the church it will operate. Undermine the authority that God set here. And then start forming other authorities. Under the headship of God's authority. Number, where are we? Eight. It will shut down through worship. Shut down the worship team. I don't like these songs. Constantly the sound of the supernatural will be, will be attacked. She wants to number nine, destroy or steal the legacy. You will build a legacy and you'll come and kill it. <laughs> The more I preach about this, the more I see how big of a mess certain denominations are. Because that pastor is now employed, he builds a legacy and then he gets another employment somewhere else. And the thing he's built, it just gets painted over next year with another vision, another color. No legacy. That's why denomination cannot give you legacy. It cannot give you inheritance. It cannot give you anointing. Fatherhood gives you anointing, gives you legacy, gives you impartation. It will destroy your identity. It's going to destroy your own self. Because when Jezebel operates, she will come in. If she gets a hold of you, she will destroy who you are. You used to be this happy person. Now all of a sudden you're sad. It changes who you are. And now you are under the control of that. And number 11 is it will undermine kingdom authority. Kingdom authority. Undermine it. It's very subtle. You know, I know Apostle Nikki is the head of the church. But if I was there, you know, if, if I could do that. Uh, but you know, I'd have to submit to him. And, hey, Jezebel. Sort you out. You will not destroy the legacy. We're building legacy. We're building a kingdom of God. 
God appoints a man, not a church board, not you, not any. God appoints. And therefore, if God appoints, we submit to the authority of God. We walk in the authority of God. Jezebel doesn't like this message because anything about authority is I have my own right. I can do whatever I want. I'm a deacon. I'm an Ephesian. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. The said authority of God has been placed by God. Jezebel will go. Now you must discern. Please understand. I know and I knew a lot of Jezebels. But I had the ability to discern between the person and the principality. And I had a lot of grace upon the person. And I gave that person as much love as I can. Because I know that spirit operates from pain. That guy only says that because of pain and hurt. And I'm not mad at him or her. I just understand that there's a separation between the person and the principality. And you know how you win them back? is with love. So how do you know if a person has a Jezebel spirit? First thing is they will be driven by insecurity. They are driven by insecurities. And insecurity, the root of insecurity is jealousy. A person who is jealous will be insecure. The second characteristic is it seduces people to commit sin. Now, here's a big thing. Number three is it creates an atmosphere to break covenant between families. It wants to get between family members. It wants to operate and pull family members and bring the vision against them. So it creates an atmosphere to break covenant. And here is, here is something, I'm coming now to you, to us. It wants to get between you and me. That spirit will do anything to get between sons and daughters and dad and mom. Because it's a covenant breaker of families. <laughs> and it will manipulate you to do her will. The fourth thing, it's very territorial. It seeks territorial domain. Let me give you an example. Uh, and I know I can use this because I know my team. But if I had a Jezebel running the, the band, for instance, this is what would have happened. I would have never had one say in this, on this team. They will tell me, you don't know anything about music, man. Just sit down. We have everything. We pray, we the best. That's what they will do because they become territorial. Now, I thank God I have Nadine and Livingston and the whole team here that is great sons and great daughters. But I'm just showing you how this thing can work. It becomes territorial. Hey, this is my, this is my uh, children's ministry. Now, it's not yours. You are under authority. It's my vision in process. No, it's not. It's the, it's, <laughs> you are under authority now. It's my cell. No, it's not your cell. It's my church people. It's my cell people. It's my band. It's my media team. It's my, no, nothing of that. You have <laughs> under authority. It sows division and discord. Number five. It sows division and discord. This is how it works. Let me just show you something. Pastor Hannes here can easily, I'm just going to use him. I'm using people I can trust. <laughs> so I use Nadine and Pastor Hannes here. I trust all of you, but let me just say this. Somebody can come and say, did you hear Pastor Hannes said this? Now all of a sudden, there is discord 
And the vision sowed between our relations. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16. Are you still getting something? I can finish if you want. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 quickly. These six things the Lord hates. Oh, I thought the Lord hates nothing. He hates these things. Seven is an abomination to him. What is that thing? Is when, now it goes through a proud look, a lying tongue. Carry on. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that divides wicked plans. Feet that are swift in running to evil. Gives you all the six things. False witness that speaks lies. And one, go back, and one who sows, number seven, discord. Among the sons and daughters, amongst the brethren. God says, I hate that thing. It's an abomination to me. She leaves the charge of sedition. Sedition is a criminal act against authority. Number six, rebellion against authority. Oh, rebellion against authority. Hey Amen. I sing better than Nadine. Why must I submit to her? Because she's in authority. Yeah, but my gift, no. There are better pastors than I am here tonight. Some of these sons are better pastors than what I am. But let me tell you something. This is my position. This is where I am. There are better CEOs than I am. There are better fathers than I am. Better husbands, but that's my position. A Jezebel spirit hates positions. Hates authority. They will always resist it, undermine it, rebel against that thing. Number seven, she will, she's a fertile spirit. She impregnates people. She breeds. <laughs> Did you hear this thing about her? <sighs> now all of a sudden Jezebel has children. Now all of a sudden it's not one person leaving the church. It's ten people leaving the church because Jezebel has impregnated those people. And we see little Jezebels running around. I'm telling you. Revelation chapter 2, verse 23. Revelation 2, 23. You're quiet on the gallery. Don't leave me out there. I will kill her children with death. Remember, we're reading about Jesse. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. It doesn't work alone. <laughs> you must understand that. Another thing is, it's very suicidal. It will bring suicidal thoughts, but it will start telling you, I'm going to commit suicide, I'm going to do this. Why? Because it operates in self-pity. Number nine, it craves for acceptance. Are you still here? Number ten, it blackmails emotionally or emotional blackmail. If you don't do this, there will be no sex for you for nine months. Oh, you didn't treat me well, so there will be no sex for you tonight, okay? Emotional blackmail. Number 11, I'm going. Coming, I'm working this thing. She's resisting, but I'm pushing. The Lord spoke to me in America. He says, you're going to come back this Sunday today, and you're going to heal the church, and you're going to deliver the church, and I'm going to take my church with all the people to another level. Let me tell all the sons in this house, you're going to go back after this service. You're going to probably preach this on Sunday, but you're going to clean your church. Get your church back in the authority of God. Get the atmosphere cleansed 
of all Jezebel spirits and get the power of God back in your heart. Shout amen if you believe. In number 11, she accused her own headship. She'll bring false accusations against it. And she becomes the number one accuser of her own headship. And silent treatment will come. And she will try to assassinate the character of her headship. The most powerful thing you can do against Jezebel is simply this. Listen to this. The most powerful thing you can do against the Jezebel spirit is to say no. Don't you want to do this? No. Who knows he thing is? She never submits to authority. Cannot accept correction. Number 13, she cannot produce leaders. She's only surrounded by followers, not by leaders. Second Kings chapter 19. Verse number 30. Hang in there. Verse, num- verse number 30. Second Kings chapter 19, verse number 30, and thir- up to 32. And then I want to read Second Kings chapter 9, verse 32. Look at this. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. And out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant and those who escape from Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. He shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with a shield, nor build a siege mount against it. Now I want to say this, and please go and study the whole thing. But it speaks about the remnant's going to rise up and we're going to bear fruit because we're dealing with that spirit in the house. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 32. And he looked up at the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? So two or three Enochs looked out at him. Now I want to speak a little bit about this. This Enochs, these unique, excuse me, that, that came there were part of this remnant, part of this spiritual world. And he says, I want to know who is for me and who is against me. You must understand in this battle who is for you and who is against you. You love the person, but that, prince, that principality, you're going to go after him with everything in your mind. Number 14, she will be fruitless in her life. And I'm going to close with the weapons of Jezebel and we're going to pray. The weapons of Jezebel is number one, self-pity. This is the weapon of Jezebel. She wants to get attention. She's got a victim mentality. No one loves me. I'm abused. People spoke bad about me. I'm mistreated. You must be relentless, merciless against the spirit. Because they want people to feel sorry for them. Number two, second weapon of Jezebel is guilt. They want to manipulate you through guilt. They want to, they want you to serve them through fear and guilt. Pastors, let me address you. You never ever go and you put guilt and fear upon your people. If they want to leave the church, you don't put scriptures out to say you're going to die and you're going to have cancer and you're going to have a divorce. You don't say stuff like that. You don't curse people. There are many of you in this building tonight that came from other churches that without you knowing has placed a curse upon you. We're going to break that tonight. Tonight is the night of deliverance, of warfare. 
We don't put guilt upon people to say if you don't give, you're going to be poor and manipulate scriptures. If people want to leave, let them go. It's good. They're still God's people. They just didn't fit into your sheepfold. And I had to repent of that. I operated in the spirit. And I had to say, God, help me to go overcome these things in my life. Then the third thing is spells. Spells are words that was declared against you. In the atmosphere. Words of curses. And I'm going to deliver you from these spells tonight. I'm going to deliver these sons tonight from your churches. So, because there are so many spells over your churches. People have spoken spells. Words of curses over your churches. Over your families. Over your finances. I can't understand why my finance is not picking up. Maybe there's a, there was words of a curse spoken over your life. 1 Kings chapter 19, and I'm nearly done. Verse number 1 and verse number 2. 1 Kings chapter 19, please. Verse number 1 and verse number 2. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. She didn't even go. Herself. She sings words of spells. And she says, so let the gods do to me. Look at this. And more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. In other words, she spoke words of curses, spells over Elijah. The greatest prophet of that time. Let's take the greatest prophet of today. And you just hear a rumor. And all of a sudden that words of spell comes around you. And, and here Elijah goes and he runs away from these words. She sends a messenger. Didn't even speak to him. I believe if she spoke to him, he would have, he would have sorted her out. But she just saying words. Words of spells. He was the most powerful prophet. Called fire from heaven. And she released a word. A demonic word. And put this great man in a depression mode. And the Bible says this. He became depressed. He became afraid. Look at this. He withdrew from his purpose. Hides in a cave. No friends. No economy around him. No food around him. Lonely. Lost his purpose. Lost his fire. Lost his desire. Lost his ministry. Because words of spells. And God, the Bible says, and God visited him in the cave and God shook the cave. God sent fire in that cave and Elijah said, I'm not coming out. God can shake you. God can send fire. But if there's a Jezebel spoken of your life, you are not going to come out of that thing. The only thing that brought Elijah out of that cave, here it is. The fire didn't bring him out. God shaking the cave didn't bring him out. But the Bible says he heard a sound. And when he heard a sound, all of a sudden he got strengthened because there is a sound that threatens the, listen, that threatens every demonic influence. It's a sound of the voices of God's people praising him and lifting him up. There is a sound of the supernatural that needs to be released. I wonder if you can pray in the Holy Ghost a little bit here. Come on, let's just create a sound of 
tongues Shekarapose teleposataya Ripanganda raposataya Hey Jezebel Shekarabaga sakatalabosetaya Shekarabobosetaya Ripamamamamama sakataya Ripandana masoko Ripamamamamamamana masataya Come on, the church must be cleansed of the spirit of Jezebel. Pastors listening to me over the over the television, cleanse your church. Purify your church. Cleanse your church from the spirit of Leviathan and the spirit of Jezebel. Cleanse that place. Cleanse the atmosphere. Woo. I'm telling you, God is raising up generals. God is raising up men and women that will wage war against the spirit of Jezebel. Somebody shout, I take my authority. Shout it, I take my authority. Rabo Shaya Mogo Setaya. Libra Mandala Basa Pramandala Basetaya. Father, my God, I take absolute authority and I break every spell of Jezebel sent to my family, sent to NBCFC, sent to all the sons and daughters, sent to the fivefold ministers. In the name of Jesus, I break your works now in the name of the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together a little bit for the Lord here tonight. Hallelujah. I want to help you as I close. Socialism is the same spirit as the Antichrist. And communism Communism is the spirit of Jezebel. But the church is going to rise in this end time. And we're coming out of the cave. If you say no to that spirit, it will kill you. Try to kill you. It will try to bring stuff to you. But you're going to stand firm. I need some men who's got backbone, man woman who's got some backbone when that devil comes out no you're not taking my family you're not taking my church you're not taking my position you're not taking my money you're not taking my marriage you're not taking my family I say no to the spirit of Jezebel we will not tolerate it anymore They will come and they will say, I think you should do this with the church. Maybe, you know, your leadership and your directorship and everything is not so and thee and that. And, and, and they start moving in that direction. The most powerful thing to say is no. No. And we'll see how that thing manifests. Because that spirit will divide churches. How do we repent of this? And I'm going to pray now. How do we overcome Jezebel? Just three things quickly. You must repent. Whether you are used by Jezebel or you are under Jezebel, you must repent. Because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 2 that God gave a time to repent. You must break every agreement you have with Jezebel. That's the second thing. You must break every agreement you have with that spirit. Here's number three. You must remove that person from any position they have. Because Jezebel gets power from position. The more authority and the more position you give that spirit, the stronger it becomes. So all you're going to say is, no, you're not the head anymore. No. 
You're not the sales manager anymore. Why I'm the best sales manager? No. Lastly, you must stand firm against that spirit. Focus on your purpose. Take authority as a husband. Take authority as a pastor. Take authority as the priest. Take authority as the businessman. Stand firm. So I want to pray for you tonight. For those of you who are in this building that says, you know what, I am, I feel I'm under that spirit. Or I am being used by that spirit. Now let me be open with you. I, Nikki van Amestazen, also had to repent of that. And said, I'm sorry God. I feel I, I operated in that. Six out of ten people operate in that. And I don't want to be like that. I want to operate in the spirit of God. I did not take my authority as the husband, as the priesthood, as the pastor of the church, as the apostle of the church. And today I have come with that authority. And I say it to every spiritual dimension no. Take my authority, take my position. If you want me to pray with you, stand to your feet. I want to pray. If you don't want me to pray, please take your seat. Because I want to release this thing over your life. I'm not going to condemn you. Because I know the difference between the person and the principality. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, my Father, my God, I come before you. I acknowledge I have been used by that spirit and I'm under control by that spirit. I repent. Shout it again. Say, I repent. I take up my position as the priest, as the father, as the mother. Come on. As the businessman. I take authority in the name of Jesus. And I enforce the victory on the cross in the name of Jesus. I renounce every spirit of Jezebel in my life, in my family, in my church. I remove every pain where Jezebel operates. I command you in the name of Jesus, come out, get out of my life. Go in Jesus' name. Come on now, loose yourself a little bit and just praise Him for some victory in this place. Come on, freedom is in this house tonight. The remnant carried on.